Hi there, and welcome to this next video on DNA replication. My name is Dr. Adela Bassi. So we've looked at previously at DNA transcription, DNA translation, how to reference. So today's about DNA replication. So let's begin. So what is DNA replication? DNA replication is known as a semi-conservative process by which DNA is doubled. This is an important process which takes place within a dividing cell. And this results in the DNA making multiple copies of itself. Yeah, and this occurs via three processes, initiation, elongation, and termination. And once again, I'd just like to stress, in my other videos, you also have steps known as initiation, elongation, and termination. But in each, for each process, there's a different one. Yeah, this is an enzyme catalyzed reaction, and DNA polymerase is the main enzyme involved. So before we move into the actual process of DNA replication, let's have a look at DNA structure. This is composed of millions of nucleotides, and nucleotides are made in of a deoxyribose sugar with a phosphate group and a base for a nucleobase attached to it. And these nucleotides are attached to each other via phosphodiester bonds to form a sugar phosphate backbone. So importantly, the bond formed between the third carbon atom of, on the deoxyribose sugar of one nucleotide and is known as the free end and the fifth carbon atom of another sugar on the next nucleotide is known as the five end. And these are phrases that you encounter quite a lot over the years as you progress along your studies. The free end is pronounced three prime and five ends pronounced five prime. There are two strands of DNA which run in opposite, otherwise known as antiparallel, directions to each other. And these strands are attached to each other throughout their lengths via the bases on each nucleotide. There are four bases associated with DNA, cytosine, guanine, adenine and thymine. Now remember in previous videos I've mentioned transcription and I've mentioned uracil. In DNA replication there is no uracil. Uracil is only present within RNA, mRNA, and subsequent processes. Nothing to do with DNA replication. So in normal DNA strands, you have cytosine, which binds to guanine, and adenine, which binds to thymine. When these are bound together, these two strands form a double helix structure. So as I said before, the first step of DNA replication is initiation. And that DNA replication is highly accurate because even a small mistake will result in mutations. So with that point being said, replication has to occur at a specific point. It cannot just happen at any point in the DNA. For the replication to begin, there has to be a region called the origin of replication. This is the point where the replication or originates. And this occurs with the unwinding of two DNA strands once the origin has been spotted. A replication force is then produced and catalyzed by the helicase enzyme, which unzips the DNA strands. So if you ever ask what is the purpose of the helicase enzyme, this unzips the DNA double strand. So, as I mentioned before, DNA synthesis is initiated at points called the origins, and these origins are targeted by initiator proteins, which then go on to recruit more proteins, which help the replication process and therefore form a replication complex around the DNA origin. Importantly, you must be aware that there are multiple origin sites within the DNA structure, and these sites, when DNA replication begins, is known as replication thoughts. So, I mentioned the DNA helicase before, how it unwinds the double helix, and this and these are used as templates for replication. And this is done by hydrolyzing the adenosine triphosphate used to form the bonds between nuclear bases, which thereby breaks the bond holding two strands together. Another important enzyme used is called DNA primase, which produces a small ribonucleus, ribonucleic acid primer, which stimulates DNA polymerase. So this enzyme is ultimately responsible for the production and expansion of new strands of DNA. So moving on to the elongation process, which is step two, as the strands are separated, the polymerase enzyme starts synthesizing the complementary sequence of each of the strands. So say for instance, if you have ATC, G, that will become TAGC. And the parental strands will act as a template for newly synthesizing daughter strands. It must be noted that elongation is undirectional. DNA is also always polymerized in the three, five prime then to five prime to three prime direction. So in one strand, the template three end three prime to five prime is continuous, and this is called continuous replication. While on the other strand, the five end to three end prime is called discontinuous replication, and this involves fragments being joined, called by DNA ligase called Okazaki fragments. So in the continuous you have the, the sequence ATGC, five, uh, three N to five prime, three, which is being joined, which is being which, which is being transcribed, so not transcribed, which is being uh, which is being synthesized, 
and then the other strand, you've got discontinuous deprecation, and you must know that discontinuous deprecation involves fragments called Okazaki fragments, and these are joined by DNA ligase. So, to recap that, once the DNA polymerase has attached to two unzipped strands of DNA, the template strands, it synthesizes new strands of DNA to match the templates. Templates. DNA polymerase is only able to extend the primer by adding three nucleotides to the free end. One of the template strands is read in the three prime to five prime direction, and it is and a new form is strand in the five end to three prime direction. This is known as the leading strand. Yeah. So the leading strand does not involve Okazaki fragments. This is continuous, not discontinuous. Along the leading strand, DNA primase only needs to produce an RNA primer once at the beginning to initiate DNA polymerase. So this is because DNA polymerase is able to extend the new DNA strand by reading the template 3N to 5N, synthesizing a 5N to 3N direction, as noted above. However, with regards to the lagging strand, which is antiparallel and which is read in a 5N to 3 direction, this is discontinuous. So, continuous DNA synthesis, which occurs in the leading strand, has to be in the 3N to 5N direction, which is impossible as DNA polymerase cannot add bases to the 5', 5 end. Instead, as the helix unwinds, RNA primers are added to the newly exposed bases on the lagging strand, and DNA synthesis occurs in fragments, but still in the 3 prime, 5' prime to 3' prime direction as before. And these are known as Okazaki fragments. So, Okazaki fragments are joined by DNA ligase. So you've got continuous replication, leading strand, discontinuous replication, lagging strand, which involves Okazaki fragments. So the final step of DNA replication is termination. So the DNA strand's expansion continues until there is no more DNA template strand left to replicate at the end of the chromosome, or two replication thoughts meet and subsequently terminate. The meeting of two replication thoughts is not regulated and happens randomly along the course of the chromosome. Once DNA production is finished, this newly synthesized strands are bound and stabilized. For the lagging strand, two enzymes are needed to achieve this stabilization. Remember the lagging strand, Okazaki family's discontinuous replication. RNA is H and removes the RNA primer at the beginning of each Okazaki fragment, and DNA ligase joins these fragments together to create one complete strand. So, Importantly, termination of replication occurs in different ways in different organisms. In E. coli, like organisms, chromosomes are circular. And this happens when two replication thoughts between two terminals meet each other. So, DNA replication enzymes. We went over the initiation, elongation, and termination, but there's quite a lot of information that you would need to know. So, I'm going to go specifically over the enzymes that are involved. So you have DNA-dependent DNA polymerase, which helps in the polymerization and catalyzes and regularizes the whole process of DNA replication with the support of other enzymes. DNTPs, deoxyribonucleoside triphosphates, are the substrate as well as the energy provider for the replication process. There are three types of DNA polymerase. You have DNA polymerase 1, it is a DNA repair enzyme, and this is involved in three activities. 5' prime to 3' prime polymerase activity, 5' prime to 3' prime exonuclearase activity and 3' prime to 5' prime exonuclearase activity. Then you have DNA polymerase 2, which is responsible for primer extension and proofreading. And you have DNA polymerase 3, which is responsible for in vivo DNA replication. You also have enzymes such as helicase, which unzips the DNA by breaking the hydrogen bonds between them. This helps in the formation of the replication fork. You have ligase, which is the enzyme which joins together in the Okazaki fragments of discontinuous DNA strands. You have, so you have primase, which helps synthesize the RNA primer complementary to the DNA template strand. You have ligase, which is the enzyme which joins together the Okazaki fragments of discontinuous DNA strands. You also have endonucleases, which produce a single standard or double standard cut in a DNA molecule. And you have single standard binding proteins which bind to single standard DNA and protects it from forming secondary structures. And just to finish off, right, that was all in eukaryotic cells. But I'm going to talk very briefly about prokaryotic cells. So DNA replication also occurs in prokaryotic cells and it occurs through the following methods. The two strands of DNA unwind at the, unwind at the origin of replication. K 
Helicase opens the DNA and replication forms are fought. Replication forms are formed. The DNA is coated by the single strand binding proteins around the replication fault to prevent rewinding of DNA. A special enzyme to called topoisomerase prevents the superquality of DNA. RNA primers are synthesized by primase and these primers are complementary to the DNA strand. DNA polymerase 3 starts adding nucleotides at the end of primers. The leading and lagging strands continue to elongate. The primers are removed and the gaps are filled with DNA polymerase 1 and sealed by ligase. So that's the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. The next video that we're coming after this is DNA mutations. And I've got a couple of other stuff lined up, hopefully, but they'll be up, they'll be getting uploaded a couple of videos every week. Yeah. I really hope you enjoyed that. And if there's any questions, please do leave uh, some comments in the section below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you very much and goodbye.